We have pork. Actually, you probably need to thaw the pork. So let's put the meat on the grill. What are you doing? What are you doing to the paper birds? Well, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna burn right away, right? We just gotta keep an eye on it, the paper will be fine. Looks like it's about time. I'm gonna try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. We heard a care, but I know what I'm... Ow! See? Told you. What are you gonna hurry? Take the paper out. It's not coming out. The thing's still frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So how are we gonna cut the meat? This, yeah, it looks like the way. Now let's sharpen the knife. Let's cut the pork. Awesome, Junipe. Now cut out the paper. C plus 10 plus F. Just use enter the password. If you put in the right number, it'll open up the oven door. Bum, 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 bum. C plus ten A B C D E F. Three numbers. Three, nine, nineteen. Voucher next to the play. Oh. Uh, appetizer is nine. Meat dish is ten. Soup is A. Seafood dish is F. Seafood dish is F. 15 of these plates, assuming they're kind of seafood. <laughs> so 15. So 15 plus 10. Nine appetizers, 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Hexadecimal? Hexadecimal is number system that goes from eight, nine, A, B, C, D. What? For base 10, right? That's the normal system of numbers. The base 10 equivalents, equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10. B equals 11, 12, 13, 14, 15.
So 12 and 15. 16 become that 10 becomes 16 in base 10. Now it sounds strange, but you can think of it as six letters add on to the numbers no, normal number system after nine. I think I get it. All right, so um. 15 plus 10 plus 10, 11, 12, 13, 12, 12, 10, and 15 is 207. No. No, it's not. Thirty-seven. Wait, or is it sixteen? Plus sixteen plus fifteen. So forty-three. <laughs> Okay, well, the door opened. Good job, Jumpy. Saturn key card. New subscriber. Great. Thank you for subbing. Uh, reliable. Thank you for being reliable with that sub. Thank you. I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy. Let's get out of here. Let's go. This isn't really a horror game, Frantic Smurf. Actually, it's not a horror game at all. I think we've been here before. You're on the other side of that room. But the elevators are over there, so that means... God, we... Hmm. Can we be on the other side of it? We went into the kitchen through that door and came out on this side. That means the map was right. Looks like. Then let's use it to plan our next move. Next move? Yeah, we need to decide where to go from here, don't we? He's right, let's get started. From the looks of it, there are four possible routes. Let's just keep it simple and call them A, B, C, and D. First, A and B. They both seem to connect to a room that looks L-shaped. Yeah, there were two doors. But they were both locked. We couldn't open them. Now, route C. This goes all the way to the main staircase. That means it's door five. One of the numbered doors. And do you think we would meet up with the other four after this hallway? No, I don't think we will. Why not? Look, there by the stairs. See how the gate is opened? When we went into the kitchen, it was closed. But it's open now. What do you think that means? They went through it? They opened it. Most likely. And if we take Route C, we're going backwards. That would be pointless. Like a broken pencil. Then that means... Route D, then. D it is. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Route D. Go always the D. Then we're set. Everything looks okay here. Let's check the next deck just to be sure. 
Yeah, just like I thought, D-Deck is totally underwater. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. At least the water level hasn't really changed. Small comfort. May as well head back to C Deck. Hmm, what else is here? There are two elevators over there at the top of the stairs, just like the floor above. Hold on, these are kind of different. See? There's a card reader on the side. Another strange mark. Hey, look, it's Lotus's symbol. Huh? See, it's the woman symbol with horns on it. Horny woman? That seems like. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. What was that about the mark again? Uh, uh nothing. <laughs> this is a Mercury symbol. The horns symbolize the wings on Hermes's staff. Hermes herpes, whatever. <laughs> if we can't get this thing to work, these elevators aren't going anywhere. In other words, we need a key card with the Mercury symbol on it. Probably. I guess we can't get on then. Let's just disregard the elevators for now. How about this hallway on the left? Whoa, there's so many doors. Damn it. If we try and search all these, the sun's gonna go down before we've done half of them. Damn it! I think the sun already... New subscriber. I have a feeling this ship is the only thing that's going to be going down anytime soon. Rhaegar, thank you for subbing with Twitch Prime. That's even worse. Well, we can come back to this hallway later. Let's check the hallway on the other side, shall we? <sighs> Time to head back to the stairs. And now the right hallway. <sighs> there are doors here too. <sighs> well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them. All right, let's start with this one. Huh, it isn't locked. I'm going to open it. Why? So is this a bedroom? What, what the hell is this? I just said what it is. This place is huge. Oh, there are beds everywhere. Hence, bedroom. Is, is this a hospital? Jesus Christ, woman. It definitely has the smell. Could be. I see medicine cabinets and surgical tools. Hey, look there. The four doors at the end. The left door says three. The second door is blank, but the third has a seven. And the rightmost door is eight. But no nine. There's no doubt. They're numbered doors. <laughs> I mean, they have big fucking numbers on them. Of course they're numbered doors. Why is the second door blank? That seems kind of strange, don't you think? No point worrying about it right now. Let's see if these will open first. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. Obviously, you gotta register on the left again. Oh, it's no use. Well, of <coughs> if it was that easy to open these doors, what would be the point of the notary game? We yeah. have to activate the red, or the numbered doors won't. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Look, the display on the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember? The red at the central staircase? If no one was inside, it said vacant. Oh, yeah. You're right. But this one. There's nothing on it. Right? Someone didn't pay the power bill. I wonder if it's broken. Only one way to find out. New subscriber. Thank you for subbing, Memily Serrana. Thank you. 
just not responding. How about the red on door seven? And door three? None of them are working. <laughs> what does it mean? Means they're off. <laughs> I knew it. They're broken. Zero sure sucks at maintenance. No, that's impossible. You really think Zero, who prepared all of this? I, I can see it now. What do you mean you shut off my power? I'm doing a a game with people and I need them to die. I paid it last week. Come on. You know how long it took me to set up all this shit? Am I st this giant ass ship and all the traps and stuff? And you're telling me you shut off my power in the middle of my of my game? God damn it! This is some bullshit. Let me talk to your manager. You better come out here and fix it right now. Who'd make such a stupid, simple mistake? Maybe, but that doesn't explain why this thing ain't working. I believe the bottom of the device has been removed. Snake! <gasps> Ace! Clover! Seven! God, Seven looks so doofy. How? How did you guys... How did you end up here? That's my line? Snake! Perhaps we should exchange information. There you have it, our half of the story. Let's see. So we all rejoined again. They're about to hit another section where you have to split into three different teams. Okay, let me see if I got all this straight. When you guys got here, the bases for the Reds were already <coughs> gone. And you looked all over this room, but you couldn't find anything. So you figured that there might be something in the hallway with all the doors. So you went and had a look? Yeah. And while you were looking around, you heard voices. And that was us. Uh-huh. So you followed the voices and came back here. And then that was us. Indeed. And that was how we found you. Which was us. Why don't we check those three reds again, just in case? Oh my god, they're not... You're right. Huh, there's a long, thin gap on the bottom. I think it's a slot for something. Uh, probably electronic. Well, this isn't good. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. Well, uh, what about that hallway over there? Isn't there anywhere else we can go? No, there isn't. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. Hospital rooms. That's what's behind all those doors? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. There was an astrological symbol engraved near the keyhole, however. Oh, that's where we gotta go I then. was able to get a good uh, feel of it. I believe it was the symbol of Jupiter. Not again. Those goddamn things are everywhere. I wonder what they all mean. While we're asking what things mean, uh, what's the deal with this room? Okay, Jerry. What's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. Chances are it's the Gigantic. The what? The Gigantic? What is this Gigantic? I think it's a game that failed. The Gigantic. She was a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. Actually, the Titanic had two sister ships, and they looked exactly the same. But they didn't sink, so no one cared. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. They intended to make her a passenger liner like the Titanic, but World War I began soon after the ship launched. The British Navy took her over and made her a hospital ship. At some point during the war, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. 
She ran aground afterwards, so she didn't end up sunk. What happened to her after that? One theory going around is that a man named Lord Gordain bought her. Seemed like he'd been one of the few to survive the Titanic sinking. That trauma turned him into some kind of obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. Soon enough, the guy wanted the Titanic itself. Which was impossible, of course. It stuck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. But the Gigantic wasn't. And seeing as she was identical... So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? Yeah, at least I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the Gigantic. Yeah, like, I'm trapped it here. Let me grab my proof. Well, uh, this ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship. So, I just figured... Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. No, I I've got more. Like? Well, uh, I mean... I don't know. I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, 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 whoa, wait a minute. Memory isn't back? Yeah. Your point being? Wait, was I the only one that didn't know? Why? Oh, yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told them I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. <gasps> what? Plot twist. Oh no. Huh. Another okay. hour gone. It sounds like the clock in the main stairway. 10, 11, 12. Huh. 12. Six hours left. It's midnight. Then we've still New got six subscriber. hours left, right? Thank you for subbing. Love. <gasps> love. I love love. We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. we got to find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. That only leaves one place to look. One? Uh, well, not just one. Hmm? Huh? Oh, wait. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. Yeah. Don't freak out. We've already searched four of them. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. Okay, I bet you it'd only take about ten minutes to get out of this place but they're gonna spend eight hours talking. If each of us can do six rooms a piece, we'll have the other 48 rooms cleared in no time. There are 48 other rooms? Uh, just maybe? Hmm. All right, so everyone knows which area they're searching? Yeah. Yes! We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? Yeah. Sounds straightforward enough. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. I hope we can find them within the time limit. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. Right. Then let's do this. Great. It's a one. I better get back to the others. doing over there what happened guys jumpy look vacant <sighs> come on guys who was it i thought we were supposed to yell if we found it well what the hell what is up with you guys well that's the thing we don't know you don't know when i got back it was already like this there was no one else here 
That means I was the first one back, but... The missing parts were already back in the red. What? L let me see. You're right. It's in there. What about the other two? They're the same. Let me take a look. It's just as you said. All right, I, I just want to be sure here. What? Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, so right? We wasted an hour? Correct. None. Huh. Wait a minute. Where's Snake? Does that mean that he found them? I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it. But nothing to suggest he didn't either. Wait a minute. You let a... You're... You let a blind man look around six rooms for stuff? I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. Well, whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Maybe he's lost. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know how he gets around in the first place. No! That's impossible! Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing! He can get around as well as anyone who can see! He's not a dolphin. So he... He couldn't get lost! That's impossible! <laughs> Key! Oh, I hear it. I'm gonna go look for him! Hey, uh, hold on, Clover. Wait! Well, that didn't work. Damn it. What should we do now? Unless Snake is secretly, uh... Daredevil, I don't think that he could see very well. Well, the red is working now. No! We're not leaving two people behind! We should go look for them! Oh, man. This ain't good. Ugh. Oh, yes. What an excellent idea. We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. Then remain here if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Let's split up. Oh, no. All right. I'll take this direction. Then I shall look that way. I'll be over here. Let's see you all later. All right. We should go, too. Yes, but where should we start? Let's see. Uh, oh, God. Um... Oh, what about the first class cabin on B deck? Okay, let's go, Jumpy. I don't know why, but I just want to look in there. What should Junpei do? Are you alright? <laughs> look, I know you're really worried, but. Um. Loan. 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 Hmm? Hmm? Shark? Suddenly she was screaming. You're so annoying! Just go away and leave me alone! Just looking at you guys is pissing me off! Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else! Stop bothering me! Terms of service! Uh, um... Such anger and hate. June's eyes has gone wild with content creation. When drama alerts. Why are you still here? Didn't you hear me? Uh. Huh? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just. All right, let's go, June. Uh, yeah. They turn and left Clover to develop her drama content by herself. <laughs> As they did, Junpei glanced back her shoulder to see. Clover wiping tears from her face. Clover had driven home the misery of their situation, but Junpei told himself that getting dressed 
depressed would get him nowhere but depressed. <sighs> we really need to find Snake, for Clover's sake. He did his best to push away the misery and depression and force the smile. So, uh, where do you think we should go next? Casino. How about the casino? Let's go take a look. It's, it's worth the gamble, right? Before they knew it, they were there. So was Lotus. She was leaning against the wall, examining her t nails. Hey. What do you think you're doing? She glanced up at him, unimpressed. Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. I'm just not seeing it. Really? Maybe you need to look harder. I don't think that's the problem. Oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Care to hear it? Menage a trois? What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to it. Why don't we team up? Team up? Yeah. What? You need me to explain it to you? I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Even if we wanted to, that's impossible. Why? Jumpy's bracelet number is five, mine is six, and yours is eight. Which is 11, 19, 10, 1. Our digital root would be one. But there's no number one door in the large hospital room. The only doors there are three, seven, and eight. Well, we would need Snake to make three. Then we add another person. Huh? Who? What, isn't that easy? Seven. Or seven. Oh, if we add seven, five plus six plus eight plus seven equals 26. The digital root of 26, 2 plus 6 equals 8. 8. Never mind. Wait a minute. What about the other four? Ace, Snake, Santa, and Clover. Well, why don't you add them up? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. And 1 plus 0 equals 1. Well, if they split into two groups, it'd be one and two, which is three, and three and four, which is seven. The digital root for those four would be one. That's right. And you know the number one door isn't in the big hospital room, right? Of course I know that. No! Are, are you saying you'd leave them behind? Of course not. What kind of woman do you think I am? Once we get off the ship, we could come back and rescue them, couldn't we? Then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think you'd do anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we managed to escape, there's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. Well, you never know until you try. No, no, you're not thinking this through. Even if we brought Seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. The four of us couldn't open door nine. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The digital route for the four of us would be eight, so we'd have to add Ace to make nine. That's right. Unless we bring Ace too, we'll be stuck. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate? That's all you have to say? Laura should be particularly surprised. Well, let's try and find another way, okay? A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That's impossible. Are you being serious? And you do know that only five people, at most, can go through one of the numbered doors, right? <sighs> the number nine isn't going to be an exception to that rule. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. Huh? Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. Unless we can make two groups of nine. No. Wait just a second. You're skipping over a really big detail. What she said was true, but Halos could remain cavalier after so terrifying a prospect was beyond Is that him. Really okay? That means three people will die in the end. Are you okay with that? That's... that's just... 
Do you think I could have a moment alone? There are some things I need to think about. June and Junpei and June turned and began walk away from Lotus. That didn't turn out to be a very pleasant conversation. Yeah. Junpei's heart felt heavy and his steps sluggish. But he told himself pessimism would just get them nowhere. Well, regardless. So he forced himself to smile and turn to June. Let's just focus on finding Snake for now, okay? Yes, you're right. We can think about those other things later. Yeah. Junpei nodded. All right. Where should we go next? Um. Oh, with all the rooms. Downstairs and check out that hallway with all the doors. Okay, they ran down the stairs. Oh, it's Ace. Ahead of them, further in the hallway, they spotted Ace. Hey, Snake, where are you? Answer me if you're there. What should Junpei do? Run to Ace. Let's go. With June in tow, Junpei jogged up to Ace. Hearing their footsteps, he turned to greet them. Ah, hello there. Sup? Snake is... Well, that's obvious, isn't it? I assume you haven't found him yet? Yeah, doesn't seem like you're having any luck either. I really wonder where he could have gone. What's the difference between these two? Well, wherever he's disappeared to... We must find him as quickly as we can. Doesn't really make For much of a difference. Sake. Right. June's face looked kind of in By the way, um, do you think Clover and Snake are really siblings? Uh, why would you say that? The question seems somehow odd to Junpei. Why? <laughs> well, it's obvious, isn't it? They don't look alike at all. Uh, Ace looked at him for a moment and then she yes, spoke. Yes, you know, now that you mention it, they don't. This is probably better for people that, like, let's say you're over here, you're, you know, you're fapping away at the, on the stream, then you look back, then you can catch up by reading it really quickly. Once you finish. Still, there are a great many siblings who do not look like one another. It certainly isn't rare. Junpei wasn't sure why, or or even if he was seeing what he thought he was, but he could have sworn that Ace's face tightened as he spoke. At any rate, we really must find Snake as soon as possible. The clock is ticking. We really can't afford to waste any time. <sighs> Very well. Let's get back to the search, shall we? You can leave this area to me. All right. Let's go, Jumpy. June's urging they left. They fa found themselves back the stairs. Junpei's mind was in turmoil. Something about that was... <sighs> I'll think on it later. Like Ace said, finding Snake is our top priority. They, he did his right. best clear his mind. Where should we go next? First class oh, cabin let's go again? Check out the first class cabin. Okay, I'm coming with you. But we just did that again. <sighs> no one's here. Maybe we'll have more luck somewhere else. But where? How about the casino? Yeah. Let's go take a. Hmm. There's no one here. Let's try somewhere else. Uh. Let's go take a look at the first class cabin. It's really. Turn the truck. Turn all the way to the left. <sighs> no one's here. Maybe we'll have more luck, but where? Oh, with all the rooms. Uh, why don't we? Go we can take a look at them. Okay, let's get. <laughs> oh, nobody's here. Snake, of course, is nowhere let's to be look found. Somewhere else. But where? Only one of the place left to go. Why don't we go back to the big hospital room? <laughs> okay, let's go then. We turn ahead and back to the large hospital room. Hey, wait, that's Santa. Only away the large hospital room. Junpei does Santa stay next to number three Santa? door. Junpei paused. What should Junpei do? Talk to him. Junpei and Jun walked up to Santa. What are you doing? What? You can't tell? I'm checking out the red. Why? Is there something bothering you? 
What? It's not bothering you? Huh? This... the guts of this red. Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm curious too, but... Who do you think did it? Santa's eyes narrowed as he looked at June. She shook her head. I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? Who do you think fixed this thing for us? Either Zero or Snake. Well, uh, it seems like it would have to be Snake, wouldn't it? Maybe he got back here before any... He found the parts somewhere, put them back, and then went through one of the numbered doors. No, that's not possible. You have to authenticate with at least three people, or the Red won't open the door. There's no way a single person could get through there by themselves. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. A stupid mistake and Junpei knew it. How had he made such a foolish miscalculation? How had Santa noticed it so quickly? Perhaps he wasn't just as clever as he used to be. Jimmy shook his head sadly. So, in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Bingo! We have a winner! But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed it. Yeah. But why? No idea. Maybe if they can clean on that, it means we'd find out something else. Something bad? Dunno. But whatever it is, it's gotta be worth hiding. Yeah, the game just roasted me hard. <laughs> like, how dare you be so dumb to choose that answer? Oh, <laughs> look at this idiot over here. Hmm. Of course, it could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. You think maybe they did something to Snake? Yeah. <sighs> Junpei stared at New Santa. Subscriber. So there was something about him that made Junpei wary and say, Thank you, Apt Drake, for subscribing. At first, he assumed that the person subscribed with Twitch Prime, and he was correct. But Junpei was beginning to think that he would need to reevaluate that assessment. When Santa spoke again, his voice was quiet. Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. You've gotta be careful. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. With that depressing suggestion, he turned and quietly walked away. And that's that. <laughs> Junpei and June looked at one another and smiled awkwardly. Dot, 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 dot. Where would they go next? Let's go have a look at the hall. I'll go wherever you... Oh, nobody's here. Let's look somewhere. But where? Well, we tried every place and Let's it, go it's all okay. nothing. <sighs> no one's maybe, but where? Okay, one last, one last cycle through all the places just to make sure. Hmm. Let's try somewhere. Hey. Sure. But... Is the Twitch Prime sub better than regular sub? It's the exact same. The only problem is it doesn't auto renew. I don't think anyone is here. Hmm. Well, we can't find him. A snake hasn't been anywhere we've searched. Let's look around at six frustrated faces and spoke. And we can't keep looking for him. Wherever he is, it's not here. We need to get moving. Jumpy couldn't disagree with what she was saying. Snake seemed to have completely disappeared. There was no point to wasting any more time. <coughs> the others seemed to be having similar thoughts, but they stayed silent. Finally, Seven spoke. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. A phrase that you won't say very often. We're not going to find Snake. There's a problem, though. <coughs> Got to figure out who's going to go through which door. Yes, I have a proposal. She walked back and forth across the floor, her heels clicking against the wood. Finally, she stopped. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? 
What? Sacrifice? Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? We can't all make it through those doors. If we split into two teams of four and three people respectively, then three people will be left behind. If we split into two teams of five and two people respectively, then two people will be left behind. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then only one person will be left behind. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Junpei wasn't quite sure that was true. Wait a hmm? Two people get left behind if we split into five and two. And one person is left behind if we split into three, three, and one. I got that part. You can't go through the numbered doors with any less than three people. But if we split into four and three, then why do three people have to be left behind? Just run the numbers. Let's say we go through door seven with one, four, five, six. Who's left over? That would be three, seven, eight. And what's the digital root for that? Three plus seven plus eight is 18, so add one and eight. Exactly. But door nine isn't here, right? That means three, seven, eight won't be going anywhere. That was just an example, of course. There are a lot of different combinations, but the result will always be the same. It doesn't matter which four it is. The three that are left over can't go through any of the doors. Go ahead and calculate it if you have the time. You'll see. <coughs> anyway, that's how it is. Now, if we can get back to my proposal, we only have to sacrifice one person if we split into three, three, and one. When Seven spoke, his voice was strained. Then, you're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind? Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. Well... If we have to do that, then I vote you. No, that's too cruel. What's so cruel about it? To to just sacrifice someone like that? Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant. We shouldn't sacrifice anyone. I told you, that's impossible. Wake up. Whoa, whoa. Calm down, you two. Maybe there's a math problem where we could get all of them to work. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is you should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Exactly. That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. What do you think? No! That's terrible! I'm not asking you. Shut up! Okay, let me motorboat them puppies and I'll, I'll sacrifice myself. But I want to get ten solid minutes of... What about you, Santa? Me? Well, I agree. Alright, that's one vote four. Counting mine, that's two. Seven. I can't say I agree with you, but we don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Oh, glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote, then it's decided. What about you, Clover? Clover had moved away from the group and was sitting on one of the beds. Her whole body pooped. Jupe didn't know if she'd even heard Lotus's proposal. Hey, Clover. Lotus walked over to Clover and gently laid her hand on her shoulder. Your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. We've searched everywhere, but we didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? Uh. Clover slowly lifted her face. Let's go look for him together, okay? If we sacrifice one person, 
then we can go look for him. You agree with me, right? Okay. Clover nodded once. <laughs> the motion carries. Lotus spun around and walked towards Junpei. Now, let's start a vote, too. That won't be necessary. Ace had barely spoken for Lotus's entire speech, and everyone jumped a little. Six pairs of eyes turned to look at him. He didn't seem to notice or even care. I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes? Uh. 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 Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that. That won't solve anything. June's voice shook and she looked around desperately for someone to agree with her. Ace simply looked at her. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust you. Each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. If we go through them... You won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True, but that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. What? Please, I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous. There's no way we could get back in time. Yeah, we gotta talk for long periods of time, bro. Finally, Jupe couldn't hold his tongue no, any longer. We've only got five hours left. We don't even know where the hell we are. How on earth are we gonna find someone to come and rescue you? Then... Perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me? Or perhaps you would be willing to leave June behind? Ace's voice was dignified without a hint of cruelty or malice. Junpei had no rebuttal. You see, there's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. Go, quickly. Junpei said frozen by decision, able to move. Uh. <sighs> June bit her lips so hard, Junpei feared she would break the skin. Santa stood against the wall, calm and aloof. Seven tore his beanie from his head and turned it over anxiously in his hands. Uh, Lotus let out a big burp. Lotus's attitude, however, was different from the others. Good. Let's accept his kind offer, then. She smiled and her eyes bright. Ace answered with a smile of his own. Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. It may be my age, but I get tired so easily these days. As he spoke, Ace lowered himself down to the floor next to one of the beds. We should, we should have boobs stay behind. From somewhere deep in the ship, Junpei suddenly heard the screeching of metal on metal. It was almost as if the this, this ship were screaming. Would it really hold under their, until their time limit was up? Apparently, D-Deck was already flooded. In the sudden silence, the only sound was the sad metal wail of the ship. Unsurprisingly, it was Lotus who spoke first. Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? As if a spell had been broken, the others began to talk at once. You're right. We should get going. That's all we can do right now. Seven? Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys talk. You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. W wait all of you, let's just calm down and think about this. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be, right, Jumpy? Say something. Yeah, let's think. There's gotta be another way. His words sounded hollow and fake. Fine, forget 
about it. I'll figure it out on my own. She spun around and ran towards Ace. He had slumped down next to the bed when June grabbed his arm and pulled. Ace! Come on, Ace. Please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here. Then it happened. <sighs> he farted a fart so foul. The paint from the walls melted away, and then a hole in the ship opened up, and we were free. Or he died. Ace fell forward. He slumped over on the wood floor. His body folded in, in half like a boxer out cold. Ace! June cried out and dropped to her knees beside him. She put her arm around his neck and did her best lift him up. What happened? Ace, say something! His eyes fluttered open. I'm all right. Her voice was weak and slightly his voice is weak and slightly slurred. How are you all right? This. He held out his left arm and slowly opened his hand. A syringe. It was a syringe in a small vial. The vial was empty. It had only been recently emptied. A few drops clung to the sides. There's a label taped to the side of the container. Dan's gaming subscription. He was hooked to get those 50 emotes every month for only $5. He just had to have more. It read Sorperil Beta. Sorperil, Sorperil Beta. Beta? What does this do? Did, did you use this? Yes. It's just anesthetic. I'll be... Fine. Anesthetic? I found it earlier. While we were searching the hospital rooms, I thought it might be useful later. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be using it on myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. New subscriber. I really am very tired. Thank you, Oak Tendy, for hitting up that needle. Junpei knew that wasn't what he, why he'd done it. Ace had injected himself with anesthetic to forestall Junpei and Jun's attempts to bring him along. If he couldn't move, there's nothing they could do. He'd injected himself so they would be forced to leave him behind. Ace! Hmm? Is there something you want to say? I just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No, don't, Ace. Don't fall asleep. Ah, you feel warm. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Creepy. Ace's eyelids drooped further and further, almost as though he were dying. Ace! Ace! She shook his shoulder again and again, but this time he didn't respond. <sighs> Only the gentle rising and falling of his chest told him he was alive. Junpei was relieved to see he was, in fact, still breathing. Uh, let's get him up on a bed. New subscriber! Thank you, Con Crafter, for subbing. He lifted Ace up on the floor and laid him on the bed he'd be leaning against. When Junpei turned around, Lotus gave him a quick look of pity. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste, right? <sighs> like you even mean that. You say something? No, nothing. It felt wrong, but he had to agree. Then suddenly Santa spoke. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, we're not done man. choosing yet, are we? 
Huh? What do you mean? Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Oh, yes. Yes, that's true. <sighs> Enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um... I want door number eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. You're next seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. What? What did you just say? <laughs> get wrecked. Her face distorted by rage. Lotus took a step forward to seven. He threw up his hands and made a face like a child caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Who, me? I, I didn't say nothing. Oh, you're gonna get it next time. <laughs> she shot him a glare that would have melted steel and turned and stalked off. All right, who's next? Santa's gaze moved across the three people left. Finally, they stopped on Junpei. Junpei? What do you want? At last, Junpei's mind was already made up. I want to go through door number three. Nope, you can't. Huh? Why? Because it's impossible. If we split ourselves into three and three, then we give up on going through door three. Why? Bracelet numbers for the six of us are three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. There are two combinations that can go through door three with three people. Three, four, five, or six, seven, eight. That's it. Of course, two teams can't go through the same door. I see. That means one New team subscriber. would get left behind. Thank you for seven, average ghoul. That's right. That doesn't happen if we go through door seven or eight. No, they're fine. We've got three options. Santa began to explain. Option A. Have three, five, and eight go through door seven. And four, six, seven go through door eight. Option B. Four, five, and seven go through seven. And three, six, and eight go through eight. Option C. Three, six, and seven go through seven. And four, five, and eight get eight. Those are the only three options. That's it. At least if we want to get all six of us out of here. Wait. That was when Jupe realized. Plan A divides into two teams. Three, five, eight, four, five, seven. Plan B divides into two teams. Four, five, seven, six, three, eight. Plan C divides into two teams. Three, six, seven, four, five, eight. I'm gonna have to leave June behind. But that means. There was one thing they all had in common. Five and six can never be on the same team. <gasps> no, love will die. If we want all six of us to go through a door, then June and I can't go into the same one. June and Junpei had been friends when they were kids. They trusted her more than anyone else in the ship. If he chose seven or eight, they'd be taken away from her. Was that something he was prepared to do? <sighs> Have you molded over enough, or do you need more time? Anyway, that's the deal, so think it over. You've got two choices, seven or eight. Then why give me a you third can't choose choice? Three. If you choose three, you're going to be leaving three people behind to die. So what are you going to do? Seven or eight? Time to choose. Junpei thought hard, thinking it hard as Clusion was. Three. Sorry, Santa, but I still want to go through door three. What? That's nuts! You've got to be crazy! <laughs> Why the hell are you so obsessed with that door? <laughs> I'm just... Junpei paused. He swallowed the word he'd been about to say. I'm just curious about door three. That's all. <laughs> that doesn't explain shit! <laughs> I've got a reason. I'd be happy to explain it to you if you'll just come with me. But then I began walking towards the door. Their curiosity was likely getting the better of them, and three of the others followed. 
Fidham looked a little suspicious, but Junpei told himself that that wouldn't matter. He kept walking and kept silent. Eventually, they arrived at number three. Junpei stopped. I'm curious about the red. Seven, would, would you mind authenticating for me? What? Why? Please, just do it. He stared at Junpei for a moment. He grunted and laid with the palm of the scanner. Happy? Yeah, thanks. The number seven has been entered into the red. Next is June. Uh, please touch the red just like seven did. <laughs> Jumpy, what are you trying to figure out? <laughs> ah, yep. I think. Junpei thought about his answer for I a second. I think I might have found another way out. What? What? Really? <laughs> yes, another way, I swear. They got that got them excited. Just as Junpei had intended. Now please, June. Oh, okay. Uh four. With those two numbers, the red Junpei had had what he wanted. He casually placed his own hand on the scanner. And third asterisk blinked on. It's nine. All right. The only people who haven't authenticated now are Santa, Clover, and Lotus. So, what's your point? You don't get it. Uh, think about it. Huh? What's the sum of your number and Clover's? Twelve. And what's the digital root of that? Three. Which is Santa's number? By the way, Lotus, uh, what's the number that's currently in the red? Seven plus six plus five equals eighteen. It would be nine, right? Yes, and what will the digital root be if you add three to that? Three, the door's number. There you go. Hey, wait a minute. What the hell are you up to? I'm not up to anything. I'm just waiting. <laughs> waiting for what? I'm waiting for the balance to shift. Santa or Lotus and Clover. Once one of you moves, the others won't have a choice. So I'm waiting. Junpei laid his hand almost as casually on the lever. You son of a bitch! <laughs> you tricked us! And all that stuff you were going on about is all bullshit! Bullshit? Huh? I don't think so. Didn't I tell you I'd figured out another way to get out of here? <laughs> this is it. Why the hell would you do something like this? <laughs> Junpei glanced at June. Jumpy. You did this just so you could go through the same door as June. That's it? What? No. Santa is furious. His face is red and flexes spit food from his face as he spoke. Junpei closed his eyes calmly and opened them again. So, who's it going to be? Santa or Lotus and Clover? Shit! <laughs> Let's go, Clover. Huh? <laughs> Lotus leapt forward. She grabbed Clover by the sleeve and ran for Jupe towards the door. <laughs> Caught by surprise, Santa froze for a moment and then shot forward like a bullet from a gun. Lotus had a head start, but Santa had the advantage of size and speed. Almost immediately, he passed Lotus and Clover. Oh, no, wait! Santa did not hesitate. He slammed his hand down the red. This is insane! This isn't right! He glared at Junpei, his chest heaving. Yeah, well, you may be right. Junpei's voice was cold, but not without fear. But. He turned to the red and pulled the lever. The sound of metal, metal door opened. But only remained for nine seconds. There's no time Go. to think. Junpei and his three lucky companions jumped into the door's gaping mouth one after another. No sooner did they enter the than all too familiar noise sounded from their left wrist. The detonators had activated. Junpei looked back only once, saw Lotus Clover next to the door of the closing door. No! They stood still and stopped where they had been. 
And Santa reached for the red in defeat and desperation on the faces tore at Junpei's heart. Then the door closed and they were gone. You son of a bitch, Junpei! This isn't fair! Get wrecked! Santa's tent rounded on Junpei and lightning crackling in his eyes, his knuckles white. Do you realize what you just did? You leave them out there and they can't... Shut it! That's enough! It hadn't been Junpei that spoke but seven. We gotta find the dead or none of this is gonna matter. The clock was ticking. The dead was their only chance of survival. Unless they could find and deactivate their detonators, four of them would be. We got less than a minute left. No time for screwing around. Get moving. Damn it. You and I are not done yet, bastard. They scattered and began to scour the room. The deactivated deactivation device was nowhere to be found. Yeah. Where the hell is it? Quarters stretched out in three directions, but everyone was blocked off by a wall of metal. There's only one way out. Only one Over other there. door. It's gotta be behind the door. Seven ran for the door, a rusty iron thing. His large hands grabbed hold of the handle and pulled. Damn, it's pitch dark inside. Can't see a thing. Junpei stuck his head through the door and looked around the no, room. Wait. Almost immediately, he spotted the blinking red light on the wall. I found it. The dead's right over here. He stepped into the room. Ugh. What? The floor's slippery. He stopped and glanced down at his feet. What hey, was... What the hell are you doing? There's something... Get over there! Jupe felt Seven's heavy hand on his back and stumbled across the room. The, other, the three piled in behind him. They all felt immediately that something was wrong. Nothing could be easily identified. Only a sense of something was terrible shared the room with them. But there was no time to say so. Quick! Get to the dead! They all started running. In the dark, it was hard to tell where the wall was. All they could see was the tiny red light blinking at them over and over and over. <sighs> there it is! In quick session, they slammed their hands against the scanner panel. Seven leaned against the wall, gulping air as his breathing began to return to normal. He glanced at his left wrist and grunted. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Junpei could hear him laughing in the dark, but couldn't, could barely make out the larger man's face. I don't think I'll ever get used to doing this. What the... <clears throat> The sound of retching came from the Santa's direction. What the hell is this smell? This is vile. I'm gonna puke. So desperate had they been in the race to the dead that no one noticed the horrible smell that pervaded the room. New subscriber! They were in the IRL section of Twitch. It was a terrible, nauseating stench, like burnt meat, rotten, burnt and rotten meat, desperation. Adrenaline had drowned it out, but now it rolled over Junpei in waves, forcing itself into his nose with every breath he took. Oh, you're right. Oh, this is... He felt his stomach clench and bile rise up in his throat. Let's get the lights on first. There's a switch over here. The light that spilled in front of the, in, in from the door barely illuminated a small switch plate on the floor on the door. Slowly, with the toll of the last few minutes, apparently... In his gate, Seven walked toward it. He stopped as he got close and extended his fingers toward the switch. Okay, guys, I'm flipping it on. There was a soft click as the light came on. <gasps> Gasp. Just like came on, June took in a short breath and... <laughs> a scream echoes through the room. Junpei's breath stopped in his throat. His heart ceased to beat. Time froze. His mind scrambled to make sense of what he saw before him. What? Hey. Oh, this is... 
What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh tore from the body, sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso of what remained of the intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall as they dried to it. it. Looks like an explosion. Seven's voice was low and strained. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his voice that set off the bomb in his gun. Oh god. The, the bone is coming out of his left arm. It's definitely an open fracture. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent and odd in a natural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing his painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on, on the ground on pieces. Your face is the worst. Yeah, can't even tell who it is. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow piping, and the gray slacks. But the clothes are... They were all familiar to Junpei. Is that... Snake? Santa's voice wavered as he spoke, his mouth dry. Oh my god. Finally, Junpei spoke. Why did this happen? No! Suddenly, June was screaming, her voice broken. It was an eerie scream, full of insanity and not entirely human. No! 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 Snake! She shook her head violently and grabbed fistful of her own hair. Chumpe could hear the sound of hair tearing. Stop! Calm down! He grabbed for her wrist. <gasps> ah! uh, hey! But as he did, Junae left up and ran toward the exit. Please! Get me out of here! You have to let me out of here! She screamed at the door and her fist slammed against it with a hollow sound. Jupe could see drops of blood on her knuckles. June. She screamed again, a desperate, mindless cry. Her fist flailed against the door. Get me out of here! Please! Please! Just let me out! June. Junpei couldn't watch anymore. He ran to June and wrapped his arms around her, pulling the screaming girl away from the door. Calm down. No! Get off of me! Let me go! Let me go! Please, calm down. She scrambled for a moment, her legs skittering across the floor, but her resistance didn't last long. As suddenly as her outburst had begun, it was over. The manic energy disappeared, and her body went limp in Junpei's arms. June collapsed towards the floor, and Junpei knelt down with her. He felt drops of something warm and wet. Was she crying? A moment later, she began to sob. Her shoulders shook and great hot tears pulled down her face like rain. We're gonna be fine. It's gonna be alright, June. It's going to be okay, Connie. Her name was a whisper. I'll be here with you, okay? She nodded once. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Her trembling voice pulled at Junpei's heart. 
He stroked her hair gently. His face was close to her. The scent of her hair was nostalgic. Do you feel better? Yes, but I'd like to stay here. For a little while, at least. Chumpy's body is so warm. Several minutes passed before June's tears had dried. Junpei stood up. He bent down, put his arms under June's, and helped her to her feet. <sighs> they didn't speak. <clears throat> Neither did Seven or Santa. A person was dead. They had died in that room in a terrible way. Junpei knew there was no way he could make himself forget that. There was no way any of them could forget it, but mourning would do no good. They spread out to search the room, but each felt as their hearts was made of lead. <sighs> we better get to it. It's so rude for them to for it, them to sit there and cuddle in front of the other people. I'm gonna grab a drink, I'll be right back in a second. I went tinkle too. Thank you, Tresk, for the final tip. It says, hey, Dan, love the content and the community. If you like 99, by the way, then you might like the uh, Dan Ganropa series. It's made by the same company. It has pretty cool concept. Try it sometime. Is that game fully voiced, though? I thought that those games are only partially voiced. All right.
Letters written in blood. L L R. That's impossible. I saw the body. You aren't doing anything after something like that happened to you. The way the blood blood dry tells you it's real old. Or the blood says it in snake. And you're saying the blood was put here for a long time ago? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> no water, not a drop. Pipes clogged. The piece of paper tied the pipe. Drainage valve operation. Please do not flush the water in these pipes. Doing so may cause the drain to overflow. New subscriber. Wait, what now? It's going three different directions. I don't know what the directions mean. Boiling water. I already checked all through toilets, you know. Nothing unusual there. Binding wall separates the toilets. What do you think this is? Looks like tar. It's, it's kind of sticky. I don't think we just wipe it off. Pouring some water isn't going to help much either. What about hot water? If I had some really hot water, like boiling water, we could wash it off. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. Come on, stop, stop it. Oh, screwdriver. Nothing in it. Oh, this one's just a shit bucket on the floor. Juba reached for the broom, and as he grabbed it, he heard a soft voice from behind him. It was June. The rabbit hutch. Huh? He turned around. June still looked sadly pale, but there was a smile on her face. Oh, you just reminded me of it. The rabbit hutch, I mean. The... the rabbit hutch? How did I remind you of something like that? Jumpy and the broom. You're always playing around with the broom in front of the rabbit hutch. I was. And don't you remember? Junpei stared at the broom in his hand. You mean, you don't remember that summer either? She looked very sad. He shook his forehead. Of course I remember. How could I forget something like that? It was terrible. They were in sixth grade. Junpei and Jun had been assigned to take care of the classroom pets, the rabbits. Their chief duty was to clean the hutches every morning. On the final day of school before summer vacation began, Junpei overslept. He rushed to school and found Jun standing in front of the rabbit hutches. No sooner had Junpei arrived, uh, Junpei arrived that Jun began to cry. He had no idea why until he looked behind her into that rabbit hutch. The first thing he saw was blood. The hutch was filled with dead bodies of the rabbits. Even after the teachers and friends came to see what the commotion was, Jun couldn't stop crying. I just kept crying and crying until you came over. You held my hand, and you looked very serious, and you said, Don't cry. I'm going to catch the person who did this. After you told me that, I finally stopped crying. Well, the real fun started after you quit crying. You told me we were going to catch the killer together. <laughs> June smiled, and a little flush of life returned to her cheeks. Then we decided that we'd ambush them. 
Yeah, I remember. The school also kept roosters and guinea pigs. Junpei and June decided to murder or likely were trying to finish off the rest of the animals. They would ambush the killer at night. Junpei and June hid behind the hutch at dusk and waited. It was a warm summer night. The sound of crickets whispered through the air. The sun went down. The stars began to wink at them from the sky. At, and June's Aikan Kurashki's face... The night had, was something Junpei knew he would never forget as long as he lived. But the murderer never showed up. <laughs> we waited for them all summer vacation, and they never showed up. Yeah, but the animals didn't get attacked either. I think all that work amounted to something, you know? He felt the same way, but it was good to hear her Although, say it. Although, you know, if you think about it, we were probably taking on a lot more than we could handle. Hmm. What do you mean? She looked at it, up at him, confused. Oh, come on, we were just kids. If whoever killed the rabbits had actually showed up, they probably would have had a knife or something. I mean, you must have been pretty worried, right? I, I wasn't worried because you were... because you were there with me. She blushed furiously. Well, you know, no one else wanted to take care of the animals. Did you murder them? I was the only one who asked to do it at first. Yeah, well, boys don't really want to bother with taking care of animals, you know? Well, yeah, but you asked to do it after I did, didn't you? Eh, if it wasn't the rabbits, they were going to make me do something else. You know how that school was. Did she murder the animals to get me to take care of her? I figured it'd be better if I was working with somebody who wasn't too much of a loudmouth, right? Somebody who wasn't going to tell on me if I felt like blowing it off. Really? That's why you volunteered? Yeah, yeah, it is. He nodded quickly and much too earnestly, then quickly looked away at something very important. Really? Of course. Uh, they had a... That hadn't been the reason, of course. He had asked to take care of the rabbits so he could be near June. But it had been so long, it couldn't bring himself to tell her how he felt back then. It would be embarrassing. Took a quick breath to clear his head, tossed the broom up, and then snatched it out of the air. Well, uh, we don't really have time to be walking down memory lane like this, you know? We've got to figure out a way out of this room. Otherwise... Yes. I'm going to look over there. She nodded curtly and turned and I walked away. I should get away. back to it myself. Yeah, let's just reminisce for... Yeah. Let's reminisce about the past for 20 minutes next to a rotting dead corpse. That's We're... right. The pool of blood. Junpei turned around and looked at the room. At Snake's body. Chunks of flesh and organs still lie on the floor. Uh, going on and on about old times right next to a corpse? What were we doing? That is exactly what I was saying. Well, maybe it was because we're in this mess. Despite the situation, perhaps because of it, the mind turned to the farthest thing from death that it could find. Still, Junpei couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt for so desperately wanting to live when a uh, snake lie dead before him. I have to survive, no matter the cost. I need to make sure she gets out too. He stared at the clumps of blackened flesh. All Junpei could think of was how much he wanted to live. I got a broom. Toilet paper. Wait, what? A stack of toilet paper. A wooden box. There's something in here. Luminol. Use a shower to fill the bucket with hot water. So I can turn on the shower. I'm gonna put the bucket under the head. Okay, sure thing. Bucket with hot water. So 
Something looks like tar inside the bowl. Flush the hot water from the bucket should clean it up. Combine it with what? Put the water in here. Like you filled it, now you should be able to flush it, right? Some pipes. Where do you flush this kind of a toilet? One eight five equals. Stuff's washed off. Looks like writing the numbers. See it? 185 equals. Looks like numbers. 185 equals a nasty shit. Let's open that shit up. <laughs> Red key card. Let's open that shit up, bro. Red light's on, Jumpy. What if we put the luminol on the blood? Wait, you don't really think we're supposed to use the luminol here, do you? It does seem kind of weird to use it here. Maybe let's try just in case. Well, we need a black light. That's where we came in. I guess not locked up here. No point. L R left, right, left, right, left. Some more letters showing. L R L L R L R L six. But why? Oh, looks like there's something down there in that grate. It's a card. It's too deep. Drains acted up. How'd you do? Uh, I messed with the puzzle. Nothing big. Ah. And there's the card. Okay. Well, now we have that unlocked.
Now the password. It's a thermometer. Can you get it off? No, just screw it onto the wall. Well, it's at... Uh, 20, 20, 25? Hey, Junpei, you know why thermometers only go up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit? Why? No, I, I can't say I ever thought about that. At 107 degrees, the cells in the human body start to die, and the organs begin to shut down. The proteins in your cells start to harden. That's lovely. Thank you for that. It's like when you hard boil an egg. Even if you cool it down afterwards, it won't go back to being a raw egg. In other words, it's dead. That's why thermometers don't go past 107. There's no point. Oh yeah? But it's pretty rare for a fever to get that high. Even viruses and stuff don't usually drive the body temperature up to 107. Of course, there are other external things that could. Like fire? Like what? Well, let's see. Something like getting locked in a sauna, or getting thrown into an incinerator and burnt to death. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would get a little hotter than 107 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, I got it! Huh? What's up? <sighs> Uh, nothing. Forget about it. What was that all about? Uh... If I get this hot water and the thermometer, then maybe... Looks like that's doing the trick. There goes the gauge. Now it's at the open mark. It opened. What's this? Looks like there's a piece of paper here. 957 plus. Hold on. One eight five equals Okay, nine five seven. Hold on. Nine five seven minus one eight five seven seven two. Plus. It says plus, damn it. One eight five. One eight five plus nine five seven equals eleven forty two. Do with this toilet paper. And this broom. Chunks of meat are on the floor. What has happened to you? Damn, I just can't. Hmm. 
What if we combine this with that? Now what does that say? What? I can't read it. It's so... Plus, plus, E, I, I can't read that. I don't know what that, what does that say? Plus, plus, I, plus, uh, God, I can't read it. Is that a three, maybe? I, I can't read that. Oh, there we go. Search button. Let's say symbols line up perfectly. It says six, three, four. Six, three, four. Six, three, four, plus one, eight, five, plus nine, five, seven. Seven, seventeen, seventy six. I found it. I found it. It has been found. There's a large iron door at the end. You're awfully chipper now. Let's take a look. How huh? the how the hell did did uh Snake get in there though? And how did we not hear the explosion? What are you doing, Seven? Well, I figure maybe we might want to come back here sometime. So, I stuck the broom in there to keep the door from shutting. All right, let's go. Jumpy, look! What's up? What's that on the wall there? Oh, I, I think it's... a map of the ship's interior? It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then. We'll have time to study it later. Let's keep going for now. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Uh -oh. What the? Well, they found a body wearing Snake's clothes, but we couldn't directly confirm that it was indeed Snake. You're shitting me. That would be hurt, because you're awfully big. We're back. What? No, we're not. Clover, Lotus, and Ace. I'm glad you're all okay. Oh, they're going to be so mad. Uh, Lotus, what are you? How could you do this to us? <laughs> yeah. Knock it off. We got bigger shit to worry about right now. What? Go have a look. Um. I stuck the screwdriver in the door. That door over there, the one without a number. As long as the screwdriver's there, it can't shut. So you can get in there. There's a shower room past there. I stuck a broom at the door there, too. Anyway. Then you're saying we can go in there without passing through the numbered door? Yeah, that's about the size of it. Wait, what the hell is in there? You'll know when you see it. Um... Fine, let's go. 
My goodness. I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. Should I go as well? Yeah. Very well. <laughs> that was your brother. Snake was probably murdered. Chances are he was killed the same way the Ninth Man was. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. Well, he would need two other... It would have to be two people. Then they shoved him into it. Alone. It would have to be two people whose numbers correlate to three when you add them together. And waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was all over for Snake. But he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonator is only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. Snake was the only one who went through the door. And then, 81 seconds after he was shoved in, that happened. All right, let's think. Has to be three numbers. Has to be three numbers. Let's do some some math here. Let's get some suspects. I need some suspects. All right, so who do we have left? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine is dead, so we cross out nine. All right, so it has to be two plus, and and the has to equal has to equal uh, three at the end. So two plus eight would be eleven. Plus one would be three. No, no, that's not right. Can't. That's that's two. Never mind. Well, if eight worked with, so we need three people that their uh, digital root is three, with the first one being two. All right, so two plus. Four and five would be, no. Five and seven would be 12. Three plus two, no, not that one. Okay, so the two combined would have to equal 11. Plus the two would be three, so five and six. Me and, me and June. That'd be 11, which equals two, plus his, Never mind. No, it has to be 10. It has to be 10. All right, so we have four and six. We have seven and three. So four and six and seven and three. I don't think any other numbers work. Now, if there were a th if there were four people involved, though, which is possible, not likely, but possible, the three together would have to equal ten. So one, four, and five. 
one plus four plus five. If it was three people, um, that would be me. June was with us the whole time, so it kind of eliminates that one. That one doesn't work either, because that would involve me. Seven and three. That would mean... Seven and three seems like the only one that would work. Seven is the dumb guy, and three is... Who's three? Three Santa. The two I brought with me. I see. So that's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. Yeah. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Well, just in case. I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? Wait a minute. Wait a second. What if number one, the guy that left behind, picked up Nine's bracelet? When we all split up to look for the parts for the Reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. Then that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah. Oh, well, the bracelet might, have, might be broken, though. That means anybody could be a killer. Not anybody. W wait a minute. What are you talking about? How can you say that so casually? You're implying that one of us is a killer. Well, not just one of us. If I'm right, then at least two of us are murderers. Why don't you calm down a bit, Seven? What are you going to gain by being so suspicious? That's what Zero wants, you know? It could be one, six, and three as well. What? Zero wants? Exactly. This game was set up by Zero, wasn't it? Any game has a winner and loser. How are you fine all of a sudden? Weren't you passed out with drugs? Whoever makes it through door nine is a winner, and those who don't are the losers. Zero is trying to make us fight against one another for that victory. Then you're saying that Zero is trying to split us up by making us fight each other? Yes. That is why we can't let ourselves fall prey to suspicion. We have to trust one another and form a strong bond of friendship. Otherwise, we'll end up ensnared by Zero's manipulations. Then does that mean that the person who killed Snake Yes. Almost certainly Zero himself. If there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Doesn't it seem reasonable that he would have killed Snake as well? Hmm. Good question. If Zero killed Snake, then Zero is on the ship with us. Not necessarily. Uh, something's still strange. Hmm? What was that? Well, I'm just wondering about one thing. And what's that? How can you be so sure that Zero's on this ship? Really, Junpei? I confess I'm a little disappointed. Really? Usually you're rather sharp. Really? Isn't it obvious? Wait, it is? This ship. 
Huh? Zero said this ship several times when he addressed us. What if it's a recording, dumbass? If he weren't here, he wouldn't say this ship, would he? He'd be saying something like, that ship, or the ship. Not necessarily. Oh, yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. If Zero's on the ship, where is he? I think... No, that, that doesn't necessarily mean... The ship? This ship? What if he's watching on cameras from somewhere else and is saying, This ship? I think Zero is... One of us. Isn't the ship going to sink in a few hours? If Zero was here with us, he'd be putting himself in danger. Why the hell would he do something like that? There's no motive. You don't believe me? No. <sighs> uh, Clover, I... Clover, I understand what you're feeling. But you have to understand. The more we distrust one another, the further we fall into our true foe's trap. Zero was the one who did those horrible things to your brother. Do you want to let yourself be manipulated by someone who would do such a horrible thing? Yeah. <laughs> it's three in the morning. We have wasted six hours? Or are you kidding me? That means we have three hours left. <sighs> then we need to move now. Seven, Clover, I know how you feel, but you do understand that right now it's important we trust one another, don't you? Weren't you drugged up? How are you better all of a sudden? We must go. We have very little time left. Our next destination is Mercury. That's on another planet. Here we go. Uh. Oh, that's the... Yeah, I found it in the shower room. Oh, I see. It's got the mercury symbol. Yeah. Now we can go. Looks like there's only two floor buttons working. C and bottom. C bottom. Time to head down then. This is a numbered door. Oh no. Yeah, it's door two. So who should go through the door this time? We don't need to be discussing who we're leaving behind this time, right? Right. It's set up so we'll be able to meet up again once we get through the numbered doors. Then there's no need for arguments at this point. Hmm. We should figure out who's going in first. Very well. Would anyone like to volunteer? I'll do it. I'll go too. And I suppose I need to go too then. No, not her. All right. We're taking off. Okay. Please be careful. Bye, June. Jesus. You two are acting like you're married, you know that? Not yet. Oh. Um. 
<laughs> Don't be silly. Cut it out. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let's do this. Where the hell is it this time? I don't see it. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Uh, do they have to grunt for each person? Oh, it stopped. Oh, yeah, it stopped. Huh. Man, I'll never get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal thing. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Damn right. Dying kind of sucks. Where are we, by the way? Oh, we took this right side. Wait, are we? There's like a ending on that side. This is like the longest ending here. All right. This hallway's pretty short, but it's got five doors. Three on the left. And only one on the right. I know, we're heading to a dead end. Don't forget the last one at the end of the hall. Uh, but it's got a metal plate over it, so I doubt we're going to get anywhere that way. All right, let's get started. Plates I think we probably better though. split up. Is you okay with that? Yes, no problem. Sure thing. Then I'll take this first one. I'll try the one next to it. Well, yeah. I guess I'd better get started, too. I guess I'll do the last one. Find it. Confinement room front hallway. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and take a lunch break, though. I'm going to go ahead and take a lunch break. I'll be back in about an hour. And when I come back, uh, we will finish up Da Vinci's house. Another puzzle game we're working on. And we'll finish this game tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. You guys have been wonderful. Love you guys.